Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be looking at Lee, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the last Ronan action figure from NECA Toys. This is the armoured version of the figure. There is also an unarmoured version of the figure available which I don't have um, and I haven't decided if I'm going to get yet or not. Um, a few weeks ago we took a look at the Playmates 5 inch version. This is NECA's 7 inch version, so um, it'll be interesting to see how they compare up. Obviously, they're very different figures, different sizes, different price points, but it will be interesting to see that later on. Um, but for now, we will be looking at this figure here. Um, before I get started, I had this a couple of weeks ago. And I opened it, or not even a couple of weeks ago, about a week ago, I had received it in the mail. I opened it and I did a video on it. Um, while I was doing the video, I noticed some issues. Uh, some joints were either really loose or incredibly tight. Um, a couple of bits uh, of the cloth, so like the shoulder pad, was lifting up. And even after the video, I noticed one of the feet, um, the soles of the foot wasn't glued in properly. Additionally, um, after the video, as I was looking at it, it didn't look quite right, and I soon realised that I had been sold a knockoff version, um, which obviously I was very, very disappointed about, especially since the knockoff version I received was in this NECA box. It was the exact same box. Uh, the figure was packaged the exact same way. It was sold to me via the eBay listing as the NECA toy. Um, but yes, as I was playing with it, it soon became very apparent to me that it was a knockoff figure, um, which obviously was very, very disappointing to me. Thankfully, through some rigmarole, I was able to get it returned and got a refund for it. And I've got this version uh, from obviously a completely different seller. Um, I haven't opened it up yet, but having looked at the figure and its window packaging inside, it there are differences between this and what I truly believe was the knockoff version. Um, I will touch on those as we look at it. Um, I don't think I'm going to upload the video of what I believed originally was the the you know, figure um but yes it's something to be mindful of um there seems to be some knockoff versions lying around um and to be honest to the untrained eye uh it seems almost identical and if it hadn't been for the fact that there were just a few niggling points that it didn't look quite like the pictures i had seen um it would have sat on my shelf for years to come with me none the wiser. Anyway, let's get on to the review of this figure. Uh, there will be spoilers for the last Ronan graphic novel. If you haven't read that, you may want to stop watching this video and go and read it. Um, so nothing spoiled for you. But otherwise, let's get into this. So initially we have here our... Uh, packaging which is pretty common with the ultimate series of NECA figures you know things like their aliens and their predator they all come in this big box packaging uh, which opens up to reveal the figure inside in a window packaging uh, which we'll look at in a second the front of the packaging is done almost like a graphic novel we see the last Ronin character there in some artwork uh, swinging nunchuck, running through the mud. Uh, it tells us it's the last road and armoured figure at the bottom. If we turn it to the side, we have some more artwork of the last Ronan. We have on the back some product shots um, here. And even when I was comparing the knockoff with the pictures on the back, it didn't look right. So there's that. If you're unsure, check your box versus the figure you've got inside. There is also a bio at the bottom. Who is the last Rodin? In a future battle-ravaged New York, a lone surviving turtle embarks on a seemingly hopeless mission, seeking justice for the family he lost. 
from legendary TMT co-creators Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird comes the final story of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, three decades in the making. What terrible events destroyed his family and left New York a crumbling post-apocalyptic nightmare? All will be revealed in this climactic turtle's tale that sees longtime friends become enemies and new allies emerging in the most unexpected places. Can the surviving turtles triumph? And then on the side, uh, we have a uh, number of the figure, uh, which is number one. I assume that if you get the unarmored version, it's like number two, and the ones coming later this year, next year, will be three, four, etc. Etc. Um, but I don't know for certain, I haven't seen those figures. But then we have a silhouette of, or oh, sorry, a back shot of our last Ronin, um, and that appears to be taken from one of the comic covers. Opening it up, it is got a nice vac uh, Velcro seal, like we see with the other Ultimate TMNT figures. Um, I always do like the Ultimate TMNT packaging. Sorry, the Ultimate Necker packagings. So it's really nicely well done. You know, if you are an in the box collector, you could have this on your displays quite nicely, and it would look, uh, you know, really well done. Otherwise, you know, uh, it's just a nice addition. So opening it up on the inside flap, we have a product shot of our turtle. And then inside, we can see the window packaging. We can see all the accessories, uh, the turtle figure himself, the alternate head sculpt, etc. So let's uh, get this opened up and let's take a look at the figure and the accessories. So as I'm on my packaging, I just want to notice the inside uh, inlay is a red and black motif, similar to the Playmates version. Um, I don't think it's quite as black as what the Playmates version was. It's not quite as dark throughout. But um, yeah, that's a similar motif to what we saw with the Playmates version. So here we have the turtle in the blister packaging. Um, this is something I want to note before I start getting it out. And it's something really worth noticing is that the knockoff version I had uh, didn't have these plastic covers over the accessories. They weren't bound in quite so well. And the same with the turtle, a lot of the bindings weren't actually clipped over. They were sort of under the foot or whatever. Um, so, you know, that's something to look for if you're uncertain you have a knockoff figure or not um, if this actually feels heavier than the knockoff version as well um, so that's another thought to bear in mind uh, so I'm gonna get this all unpackaged and we're gonna take a look at everything and here we have our figure out of the packaging with all of its accessories I'm gonna go through the accessories first before we look at our figure um, as you can see it comes with two extra sets of hands so you get three sets of hands in total you have some uh, gripping fists and you have some open hand you then get a alternate head sculpt uh, this is sort of a big raging face um, and this is going to be the first indication of well, having uh, a big difference between the knockoff version and the original, uh, or, you know, the official one. Uh, with this, it was almost unnoticeable, but um, the head sculpt on the knockoff between where they had moulded these two parts together wasn't lined quite right. And you could see a very, very small gap between the mould of the bandana and the snout almost unnoticeable uh, if you saw it you know you would generally think it was just a slightly poor quality control on a figure um, and it wasn't obviously until I figured out that it was a knockoff that I put two and two together um, but you can see there's some really nice detailing throughout here you got some sort of you know shading into the wrinkles you know, spots and you know uh, frown marks and everything else throughout the head sculpt the back of the bandana piece does clip off so that you can use the second one 
if you want. So you have the two options. Uh, uh, we get the goggles, which are on a piece of elastic. Uh, plastic feels sturdier than the knockoff versions did. Um, yeah. We have my keys and nunchuck, uh, which is nicely detailed. You get a nice metal chain. Uh, there's some very fine, fine shading just down there. Uh, you get the four throwing stars. Uh, these are nicely done, very solid and sharp plastic. Uh, we have some sort of thermal detonator type device. Uh, you got a nice little uh, silver coat of paint there and some red dots. We get our grappling hook. Um, this brings us on to another piece of the, uh, the difference between the official and the knockoff is the string. The string here is nice quality, it's tight and taut and uh, everything else. Uh, the knockoff version looked very thin and flimsy, um, sort of fraying quite a bit throughout. Again, not enough that you would instantly think it was um, a knockoff and more, you know, just what it was uh, but yeah that's something to be mindful of we get raft sigh uh, that's a very sharp plastic uh, with no real wiggle worm I can see that easily snapping if you're not too careful we get Donnie's bow staff uh, the knockoff version did have a wash similar to what we can see here um, but it's not it was sort of a little heavier handed almost uh, this is a nice subtle wash throughout especially on the uh, grips and into the sort of the grooves of the wood we have one of leo's katanas uh, the uh, unarmored version comes with the broken katana as well i believe but uh, the armored version just comes with the full katana um, there's some nice detailing here, especially on the grips. You can see some uh, darker wash throughout the handle, um, which wasn't quite as present on the knockoff version. We get the scabbard, uh, which is pretty much identical to what the knockoff version was like. Um, that's a tighter fit, though. That's, that's a nice tight fit. And then finally, in terms of accessories, we get a uh, baton, um, which has a nice black wash to the silver plastic. Uh, again, uh, this is something the knockoff version had, but it was a lot thicker put on. It wasn't as finely detailed as this. But again, it's not the sort of thing you'd notice until you'd seen, you know, both, as it were. And then we come to our figure, which is fantastic. There is some real weight to this figure. and That's something that was definitely missing from the knockoff version. It didn't have the same weight. Uh, the legs on the knockoff version were really loose. Uh, these are nice and tight. You can hear the tightness there. You may want to get a hairdryer to these before you start playing around too much. On my knockoff version, this arm was really loose but this one I couldn't move it was so tight and the arm here was thinner so you had a much bigger gap between the bicep and the elbow um, for the knockoff version the I don't know if you can see it on the camera is the sort of patchwork on the cloth throughout wasn't as pronounced as it is on this the undershirt here was misaligned so it was that one was pretty much all but tucked under there with that one moving over across this shoulder pad was coming off and you could literally physically lift it up and it was lacking the what the, the sort of the brownish wash on that um, as was the other 
bits of leather and things throughout that they were all missing their darkened wash um, again it wasn't anything pronounced enough that when you first look at it that you think oh um, you know it was just what it was but the more I looked at it the more you play with it um, you began to realize it just didn't feel like what you would expect from a necker um, especially at the sort of the 40 pound price point it's more of something you would expect from you know a 20 quid figure um, which this is not um, this is definitely worth the 40 plus pound uh, price point um, all of the joints on this, as I mentioned, are really nice and tight. Uh, you're probably going to want to get a hairdryer to loosen some of them up, but it has a nice range of movement on it. Our head is on a ball joint, so the hood can come off, and there's just a peg in the back to plug it into the back of the bandana on the head to hold it in place, but we're going to turn that off for the review. So the head gets a full range of movement. It's on a ball joint. Oh, that's interesting. The neck on the knockoff piece didn't come up all the way, and you could see the uh, neck joint. So that's something else to look out for. Uh, so you get a full, nice range of movement there. The arms can get most of the way around. It gets tight. Uh, one, because of the way of the figure, and two, you know, just because of the shoulder pad there. The arms do move out there on that joint, but this is so tight that it needs some loosening up before it gets the full movement. I think that's as far out as it's going to go because of the shoulder pads. Still, it's a nice range of movement there. The bicep is on a full swivel with double bends at the elbow. Uh, one is at the top here, just under the bicep, and the other one is down by the lower arm under the elbow pad uh, so you can move that the gauntlet or the wrist guards are on a swivel as are the wrists which are on one of those hinge joints we get full rotation at the waist and this may be the first turtle figure i've had which actually has waist rotation so you can get a nice oh god my back sorry <laughs> but yeah you get a nice turn there uh oh so i think it's on a ball joint so you get some nice swivel and range of movement there uh legs come out yay far uh stiffness there because you've got the jacket stopping it completely here you've got it on a nice ball joint um think if I remember rightly the knockoff version was on those standard hinge joints so again something else to be mindful of double bend at the knee so you can get a nice movement here and swivel of nice full range of feet um, on the knockoff version this foot the shoe was actually coming away and you could see under and the foot was hollow underneath uh, you have some nice detailing oh that's a you ridged at everything there's some really nice detailing there um, so yeah we get some really nice range of movement with this figure uh, and he's got plenty of accessories to fully armor him up and he will be able to fit and hold on to most of these accessories so i'm going to get him armored up we'll take a look at him and then we're going to take a comparison of this figure against the Playmates Toys version, which again, I will stress different price points, different manufacturers. So they are going to be different, but it's going to be nice to see uh, them side by side. And we here we have our figure all set up. You know, the more time I spend with this figure, the more I love it, the more I'm noticing on it, you know, the silver paints here, into the scratches and grooves of his guards. Um, you know, the wash on the leather belt, uh, all the nice little detailing throughout. Um, you know, it just, it's a fantastic figure and definitely one of the best pieces I've got in my collection now, and not just turtles wise. 
So yeah, uh, he grips his weapons really nice and tightly. Um, I will say with the side, you can get the you know grip where he's holding it between his fingers. Um, these are both very tight fitting, um, and I do have concerns that a constant movement could lead to these plastic snapping and with the string coming snapping off either as well. But so far, no problems. Um, bow staff will only fit properly by you sliding the top half up through rather than down. If it's down um, it won't go past the grips and will stick upwards. You've got the goggles uh, around the neck. You can put them over the eyes. Um, you probably will want either the hood or the bandana plugged in to ensure that they don't spring off because it's just a piece of elastic um, but yeah there we have our last Ronan action figure from NECA Toys um, as I said this is a fantastic piece and definitely one of the best pieces I now have in my collection uh, I absolutely love this figure I'm so glad I have it um, let's take a look at this alongside the Playmates Toys version um, there we have it you know uh, I like the Playmates Toys version, um, it's nice to, nice, and it serves a certain purpose compared to this. This is a proper collector's display piece. This one you could be okay with your kids playing with. But that's not to say it doesn't have some nice detailing throughout. Um, you know, it grips the weapons. The weapons are actually put on the correct way. On the Playmates Toys version where they're the opposite direction of Necker's um, which is slightly incorrect but oh well um, yeah it doesn't have the same level of detailing as this figure does you know it's a simple sort of one-tone colors throughout for the most part there are some washes here and there but um, but again one this is a much smaller figure it's only, you know, five inch scale rather than seven inch. And two, your price points are very, very different. This is 20 to 25. This is 40 plus. So, you know, you would expect there to be a difference. Um, but that's just not to say that this isn't a really nice figure and really well done. So there we have our two last Ronan action figures one from playmates toys and our primary one from necker toys i hope you've enjoyed this video i will be back soon with more good stuff until then be safe